Hey everyone, I'm Carol Thompson. Before I dive into my story, please like and subscribe if you want to hear more about the wild ride that is my life as a working single mom. Trust me, it's a roller coaster you won't want to miss. It's 5.30 a.m. and my alarm's blaring. I'm up like a shot, stumbling around our cozy Chicago apartment trying not to wake my little girl, Emma. She's seven, and let me tell you, she's got more energy than I can handle most days. Mommy, is it morning already? Emma's sleepy voice calls out. Rise and shine, sweetie, we've got a big day ahead. I'm hustling, making breakfast, packing lunches, all while trying to look somewhat presentable for my job downtown. Emma's sitting at the kitchen counter, swinging her legs and chattering about her upcoming school project. And then we're going to make a volcano that really erupts. Can we get the stuff this weekend? Of course, honey. We'll make it the best volcano your class has ever seen. I'm only half listening, to be honest. My mind's already at work thinking about the presentation I've got later. But I paced on a smile and nod enthusiastically. Mom guilt? Yeah, I've got a PhD in that. We're out the door by 7.15, racing to catch the L train. I drop Emma off at school, giving her a quick kiss goodbye. Have a great day, sweetie. Grandma Evelyn will pick you up today, okay? Emma's face lights up. Yay, can we have ice cream? I bite my lip. We'll see what Grandma says. Remember, homework first. The train ride downtown is my moment of peace. I check my emails, prep for my meetings, and try not to think about the fact that my ex-mother-in-law probably has a whole lecture prepared for me about working moms and neglected children. I sprint into the office at 8.55, praying my boss Diane hasn't noticed I'm cutting it close. Again. Carol, just the person I wanted to see. Diane's voice booms across the office. So much for flying under the radar. Morning, Diane, what's up? I've got some news for you. Let's chat in my office. My stomach does a little flip. Good news or bad news? With Diane, you never know. As I follow her, my work bestie Jake shoots me a thumbs up. He's been covering for me more than I'd like to admit lately. So, Carol, Diane starts, leaning back in her chair. You've been doing some impressive work lately. That campaign for sports fuel? Knocked it out of the park? Thanks, Diane. I'm glad it's been well-received. More than well-received. The client's thrilled, which brings me to my next point. We're looking at restructuring the team, and I think you'd be perfect to head up our new division. My jaw drops. Are you serious? That's... Wow. It's a big step up, Carol. More responsibility. Longer hours. But also a significant bump in pay. Take some time to think about it. We can discuss details next week. I leave Diane's office in a daze. A promotion. More money. But longer hours? How would that work with Emma? Jake corners me by the water cooler. Spill. What did the big boss want? She offered me a promotion, head of the new division. Carol, that's amazing. We need to celebrate? Drinks after work? I shake my head. Can't. Gotta pick up Emma from my mother-in-law's. Jake's face falls a bit. Right, single mom life? Rain check? Definitely. Evelyn opens the door, her face a mask of disapproval. Carol, you're late. Again. Traffic was terrible. How was Emma? She's fine. No thanks to you. Evelyn's voice drips with disdain. You know, if you were home more, I cut her off. Thanks for watching her, Evelyn. Emma, honey, time to go. Emma comes bounding down the stairs, ice cream smeared across her face. Mommy, Grandma let me have two scoops. I force a smile. That's great, sweetie. Say thank you to Grandma. As we walk to the car, my mind's racing. The promotion could change everything. A better apartment, maybe even a house. The best schools for Emma. But at what cost? Little did I know this dilemma was just the beginning of a storm that was about to turn my life upside down. I took a deep breath, stepped into Diane's office and said, I'm in. Just like that, my life kicked into high gear. New title, new responsibilities, and a whole lot more stress. First order of business, finding someone to watch Emma after school. Enter Sarah a bubbly college student with a schedule as flexible as a gymnast. So you'll pick her up at 3.30, help with homework, and start dinner? I asked, running through the checklist for the millionth time. 
Sarah nodded enthusiastically. Absolutely, Miss Thompson. Emma and I are going to have a blast. I should have known Evelyn wouldn't take this lying down. She showed up at my door that weekend, face like thunder. A stranger watching my granddaughter? Have you lost your mind, Carol? She's not a stranger, Evelyn. She's a responsible adult who... who isn't family, Evelyn cut me off. I thought we agreed I'd take on more responsibility with Emma. I bit back a retort. I appreciate your help, but with my new position, I need consistent childcare. Sarah can provide that. Evelyn's eyes narrowed. Your new position, of course. Always putting your career first, aren't you? The jabs didn't stop there. Evelyn started popping up unannounced, always when Sarah was watching Emma. At work, things were just as tense. I was drowning in meetings and deadlines, barely keeping my head above water. You look like you could use this, Jake said, sliding a coffee across my desk. I grabbed it gratefully. You're a lifesaver. Jake perched on the edge of my desk. Seriously, Carol, are you okay? You've seemed stressed lately. I sighed. Just adjusting to the new role. It's a lot, you know, Jake nodded sympathetically. I get it. Hey, why don't we grab dinner this week? You look like you could use a break. I hesitated. I don't know, Jake. With Emma and everything? Come on, one night won't kill you. You deserve some adult conversation that doesn't revolve around marketing strategies. I laughed, feeling some of the tension ease from my shoulders. All right, you've twisted my arm. Little did I know, Melissa from accounting had overheard our exchange. By lunchtime, the office was buzzing with whispers about the affair between Jake and the new division head. As if I didn't have enough on my plate, Mark suddenly decided to make an appearance in Emma's life. I was thinking I could take her for the weekend, he said over the phone, his voice unusually cheerful. I frowned. This is unexpected. What brought this on? Can't a father want to spend time with his daughter? Against my better judgment, I agreed. When Emma came back, she was bubbling with excitement. Daddy took me to the zoo, and Grandma made cookies, and we had a tea party, and... My heart sank as Emma rattled on about her perfect weekend with Mark and Evelyn. I tried to squash the jealousy rising in my chest. That sounds wonderful, sweetie. I'm glad you had fun. The final straw came on a Tuesday afternoon. I was in the middle of a presentation when my phone buzzed. Emma's school. Miss Thompson, we had a bit of a situation here. Your mother-in-law tried to pick up Emma without authorization. My blood ran cold. What? Is Emma okay? She's fine, but upset. Mrs. Winters insisted you were stuck at work and couldn't be reached. I closed my eyes, trying to keep my voice steady. I'll be right there. As I rushed out of the office, ignoring the curious stares, I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of a much bigger problem. Evelyn was playing a dangerous game, and I was terrified of what her next move might be. I stormed up to Evelyn's front door, my blood boiling. The second she opened it, I let loose. What the hell were you thinking trying to take Emma from school? Evelyn's face hardened. Someone had to look out for that child's best interests. Her best interests? You mean your interests? Face it, Carol. You're an unfit mother, always at work, leaving Emma with strangers. It's time someone stepped in. I felt like I'd been slapped. What are you talking about? Evelyn's eyes glittered with malice. Mark and I have been talking. We think it's time Emma had a stable home environment. With her father. My world tilted. You can't be serious. Oh, I am. And with my resources, don't think for a second you can stop us. I left Evelyn's house in a daze, my mind reeling. At home, I noticed Emma growing quieter, more withdrawn. One night, I found her crying in her room. Baby, what's wrong? Emma hiccuped. Is it true? Are you going to send me away to school because of your job? My heart shattered. What? No. Who told you that? Grandma Evelyn said you might, because you're always so busy. I pulled Emma close, fury and heartbreak warring inside me. Listen to me. I will never, ever send you away. You're the most important thing in my life. Always. 
Mark stood up, looking uncomfortable. Carol, I... We need to talk. About what? I snapped, though I knew what was coming. He pulled out a stack of papers. I'm filing for full custody of Emma. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. You've got to be joking. You've barely been in her life for years. Evelyn jumped in. That's because you've pushed him away, always too busy with your precious career to make time for Emma's father. That's rich coming from you, I snarled. You're the one who's been poisoning Emma against me. You can't raise Emma to be a proper lady. You're too busy trying to be a man in that corporate world of yours. Evelyn said I saw red. A proper lady? Is that what this is about? You think you can mold Emma into some 1950s housewife fantasy? Mark looked confused. Mom, what is she talking about? Evelyn waved her hand dismissively. Oh, please. Carol's filling your head with nonsense. We're doing what's best for Emma. I took a deep breath. My hand inched towards my phone in my pocket, making sure the recording app was still running. No, Evelyn. You're doing what's best for you. You've always hated that I work, that I'm independent. This isn't about Emma at all, is it? It's about control. Evelyn's mask slipped for a moment, her eyes flashing with anger. You ungrateful little... I'm trying to save my granddaughter from turning out like you. Mark's eyes widened. Mom, what are you saying? As they left, Evelyn shooting daggers at me, I sank onto the couch. My hands were shaking, but for the first time in months, I felt a glimmer of hope. The game had changed, and now I had the upper hand. I sat across from Mark at the little cafe where we used to have our first dates, feeling a strange mix of determination and nostalgia. I slid my phone across the table. You need to hear this. As the recording played, Mark's face went through a rainbow of emotions. Shock, anger, disbelief. When it ended, he looked at me with new eyes. Carol, I... I had no idea. Mom told me you were... I cut him off. Neglectful? An unfit mother? Yeah, I got that memo. Mark ran a hand through his hair. God, I've been an idiot. I'm so sorry. It's not just me you need to apologize to, I said, thinking of Emma. He nodded, looking ashamed. You're right. I want to make this right, Carol. For Emma. Weekend visits. No more using Emma as a pawn. For the first time in years, I felt like Mark and I were on the same team. Now came the hard part. Dealing with Evelyn. I invited her over my heart pounding as I laid down the law. You can see Emma, but only under supervised visits. No more undermining my parenting, no more manipulation. If you can't respect these boundaries, you won't see her at all. Evelyn's face turned an impressive shade of purple. You can't do this. I'm her grandmother. Watch me, I said, surprised by my own calm. Work became a joy again. My team launched a hugely successful campaign, and I felt on top of the world. At home, as I tucked Emma in that night, I couldn't help but reflect on how far we'd come. Mommy, Emma said sleepily, I'm glad you're my mom. That's the end of my story, everyone. Now I have a question for you. Do you think it's possible to be both a successful career woman and a good mother? Or are we always sacrificing one for the other? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Your experiences and opinions matter, and they might help someone else who's struggling with this balance. If you enjoyed this story and want to hear more like it, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Your support means the world to me and helps me continue sharing these real-life experiences. Thanks for listening.